Hi and welcome to my math class. Today I am doing a revision exercise for all the grade 10 work on probability. Okay, when we start probability, the heart of probability is that probability is equal to the n of the event over the n of the sample space. So the one that is favorable over all the elements. So the one that is favorable over all the choices. But we also have a few rules that are important. Now you got the inclusive rule. The inclusive rule states the P of A or B is equal to the P of A plus the P of B minus the P of A and B. Now or is basically everything that's in the events of A and B. A and B, so the and means only where they are overlapping. Now, what happens when this formula starts doing certain things? Like, when P of A and B is equal to 0, then we're going to call this mutually exclusive. Which means that the two graphs, if you take the two events, they do not touch. Then we have where P of A or B is equal to 1. Now this is called exhaustive. This does not mean that they don't have to touch. I can have an event where they are overlapping and I can have an event where they don't overlap. But all the elements are in the blocks. There is no element outside of the events. So there is no element outside of the event. So exhaustive, it can be inclusive or exclusive. Then you have an event where we have P of A plus P of B is equal to 1. Now, this is the complementary event. Now, the complementary event means it does not touch and it has no other elements outside. So the complementary event has to be exclusive and it has to be exhaustive. Now if you know the summary, then you will be okay when you're doing the work. What you need to emphasize is that this is the heart of all the questions. If you know this one and you know how to substitute correctly, you will be fine. Let's do a few examples. Let's take a mine. There are 420 workers in the mine. 260 go underground, 190 are above surface and 60 do both. Now, how do we decide what are we doing? We know that there's an overlap because they tell us that 60 do both. Now the biggest mistake pupils do and be aware because this is what pupils do. So I have the undergrounds and I have the up. The people that are going underground and the people that are remaining on top. Now what the pupils do is they put here 260 and then they put 190. But that is by far the biggest mistake you're going to make. If you are stuck and you get it wrong in grade 10 and grade 11, I can guarantee you that that is most likely the mistake you're making. To determine how many are underground, 260 go underground. It would be 260 
minus the 60 that we already got because underground would be the entire circle which includes the 60. Then if we say 190 is above then we have 190 minus 60. Okay so what do we have so far? We have that the undergrounds are 260 minus 60 which is 200. We have 60 that is in both and then we have 190 minus 60 which is 130. Now if you count they are telling us that there are 420 workers. You've got 200 plus 130 plus you have your 60 which is equal to 390. Something's not right. Our entire sample space is not used. So how many are not going underground neither are they, they above the ground. Maybe they're in the office or maybe they just you know doing something else. Maybe they're not even on site. So we know there's 420. You've only used up 390. So the balance is 30. Now how do we decide if this is, is mutually exclusive or if it's exhaustive, if it's complementary. Most of the time when you look at the graph, you can simply see it. If you look, it is definitely not exclusive because we have a link. Number two, it is not exhaustive because exhaustive says we have used all the sample space. So we know that this is not exclusive and we know that it is not exhaustive. Now in the exams if they tell you prove that this is exclusive then you would say okay for it to be exclusive then I have to have that P of A and P of B must equal to 0. Okay. Now I've got P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B. For it to be exclusive, I must prove that P of A and B is equal to 0. So P of A is 260 over 420. P of B is 190 over 420 minus x. Remember we still want to prove that it's either equal to 0 or it's not. Now what do we have for P of A or B? What do we have for the entire thing? Now if I get my x alone, how many have? 260 plus 190 minus 360 is going to equal to my x. This here gives me that x is equal to 60 over 420. That tells me these events are not exclusive. Now when you are doing the exam, in the exam you may not make conclusions. So you are telling me okay it's not exclusive. Do not do things like saying, oh, so now it's inclusive. Don't do things like that. When they tell you, show that it's exhaustive or not exhaustive, you show and you say, okay, finished. Right, let's do another one. They are telling us that P of A is equal to 0, 0,5, P of B is equal to 0, 0,25, and P of A or B is equal to 0, 0,625. Now, if I want P of A and B, I know the formula says P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B. So I have 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,25 minus my unknown is equal to 0, 0,625. My x is going to equal to 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,25 minus 0, 0,625. 
which means my x is equal to 0, 0,125. Right now, when they say explain why each is valid, I am talking of is it exclusive? Is it exhaustive? Is it complementary? Now you must explain why each of them are valid or not valid. Now, exclusive says that P of A and B must be equal to 0. Therefore, this event is not exclusive. Is it exhaustive? For it to be exhaustive, P of A or B must equal to 1. But in this case, P of A or B is equal to 0, 0,625. Therefore, it is not exhaustive. Is it complementary? Complementary states that P of A plus P of B must equal to 1. In this case, if I got 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,25, it is equal to 0, 0,75. Therefore, it is not complementary. Now what I want you to notice is, I did not go on and say, oh, so you know what, this is inclusive. I didn't go and make other deductions. What they asked me, I answered and then I stopped. Because if you make further deductions, they will penalize you. You must answer the question in probability and you must stop. You must not go further. Even if you could be mathematically correct or mathematically incorrect, you will be disadvantaging yourself. Thank you for watching.